you have to have a certain type of confidence about you, even if you don't know it, to actually get in a ring with everyone watching and just get, because it's quite a, it's a real lonely, lonely place once you get in. It's wicked training, everyone's hyping you up for this big fight, and oh, you're going to do really well, you're going to do really well, and the walkout's really cool, it's the music that you've chosen, everyone's cheering your name, and then, then you get in there, and then everyone gets out of the ring, and it's just you, your opponent, and the referee, and yeah, it's quite scary. So, um, yeah, it does take a different, a certain type of person to do it. So representing the Bulldog team and England, he is a superstar of the sport. He is a multiple world champion. Would you please welcome John Ocho? Because you look good, really then. angry. Can I look really <laughs> angry? <laughs> when, when you're young, you just don't have any nerves. You, um, yeah, it, as you get older, you get, you get more scared and, and stuff like that. When you're in like 1920, you've just got all the confidence in the world. When he first came to me, he was probably only 17 or 18, I think. So at that point, he, he was still growing and developing, had a little bit of puppy fat, even though he's over six foot. He had no real anger, no real teenage angst or anything like that. So he was, he was quite easy to work with and you could develop the natural talent. You didn't have to fight the anger. To, to bring the talent out. <laughs> I've never I've never looked at sport in that way, like boxing. It was always it was always for me it was like a technical chess match. Um, and whenever anybody ever got angry, I, that would be my way of knowing that I was winning the fight because they they were giving something away. Everyone's different. Everyone expresses themselves in different ways. Um, I'm not like that outside the ring. Anger clouds your judgment, makes you make mistakes, that type of thing. Spite, that's something else. He's spiteful, he takes a spite into the ring and he knows where to drop a shot to make it hurt. It was like a, I was supposed to be fighting in Holland like a few months later and it was supposed to be like a major, big, big, big fight. And this guy was um, come over and this was going to be sort of my preparation fight for that one. And then the first round was quite easily, he, was quite, he, he wasn't that good. So I was beating him quite comfortably and I cut his eye just there. Um, and then the next round, I was just kept going for the cut, get go, kept going for the cut to try to open it up because if you open the cut up enough, the doctor stops the fight. And everyone knows the score, everyone gets in there for the same reason and, and we, we all know the risks we've got to take. We've never really had to pick him up off the floor after a loss. We, we did have a, uh, a freak incident with a broken nose that he had at one time which took him a while to get over. And this right hand come right through my guard and my nose split in like three different places. Uh, it was pretty pretty bad. Well, I didn't fight for a whole year because it, it, the, the break was that bad. I've had my nose broken before, but like I've been out for a couple of months and I've carried on. But this was out for a whole year. Um, and yeah, yeah, the next fight afterwards was like 14 months afterwards. And like, I remember getting in there and I kept touching my nose, worried every little knock was, was oh, oh, hope my nose isn't bleeding, hope my nose isn't bleeding. And it affected me for three or four fights afterwards. But after that, you know, we came back again and. And, and he, he registered some of his biggest wins after that. My parents, they, um, they love telling everybody that I do it and what I've won and what I've done, but they, I think my dad's come to about three fights and my mum's never, never come. She'll watch it afterwards, but won't watch it during. And yeah, she's not, she's not really interested like, in that way because she's scared her, her little boy's going to get beaten up. <laughs> when you train people, you attract a certain type of person. So people who come and train with me are generally the same thinking of me. So I, I get a lot of business money who don't really, don't really want to get hurt. If, if you get angry, if you need to get angry, or you, you'll probably end up going to a trainer with a similar personality as you. These people who fight outside the ring are bullies. So I've had confrontations, and then I've, once you've got, if you've got the confidence, you can defuse situations like that. Um, I've been in a few hairy situations, I think, but I've just managed to talk myself out of it. Did he really have any weaknesses? He was one of, I mean, he's, he's regarded as one of the greats, one of the modern greats throughout the world in kickboxing and, and by the whole community, by anybody who's anybody. So did he have weaknesses? I can probably say it now because his, his career is coming towards an end, but he always did have trouble working with someone who was similar to himself, like a counterfighter or a counterpuncher. He liked people to come at him people come at him, most people don't like that. He liked it. 
scared of losing. Because uh, there's a lot more now. Like when I was 17, I, there was nothing to lose if I lost a fight. It was I'd have to improve and win the next one. Where now it's like I've got such a big reputation and I've got loads. Of, all my students come and watch. It gets to a point where where I've, once you've done, been there and done it. Um, there's not really nowhere for me to go now. I've got like three world titles. And the only way I can go is down, really. At some point you're going to peak because someone's better than you. So you've you always got to keep with it and, and you've got to know when it's over as well.